I really believe that God can bless you anywhere. He can bless you even in Africa. Those people who are talking down on Africa, I'm telling you now, God's going to give them a surprise. I've been all around the world. You can talk to me. I've been, I've called to the nations. And the South Africa is a beautiful nation. We really just need a godly intervention. We really need revival in this place, in, in our country. And let's pray that the Lord will turn things around for us. Let's really pray that the Lord will have mercy on our nation. Be the positive one. Amen. Now, yeah, let's check uh, the story of Joseph for a moment. Uh, Genesis uh, 39, you can follow on the board. Just the first five verses uh, out of the NIV. It says, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. And the Lord was with Joseph. I want you to put your name in there. Say, the Lord is with Henry. Come on, put in your name there. Say that again. Some of you still want to, you don't know what your name is. Just put your name in there. Say, the Lord is with Henry. Come on, one, one more time. The Lord is with Check this out. Every time uh, when God favors somebody, the Bible will, will, will highlight it. In fact, it says a couple of times, and God was with Joseph. This is wonderful. So the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. Now there's many people, even Christians these days, they attack men of God who's preaching prosperity. How dumb can you be and still breathe? Don't you want prosperity? Amen. Come on, just be honest now. Talk to me here. There's freedom here. Do you want to be poor? No. Must I pray that you become poor? No. So why do they attack pastors who preach prosperity? Uh, just breathe. I mean, why, why in the world would you attack a man of God who says, the Lord wants to bless you, God is with you. Prosperity, and by the way, prosperity is not only money. Money is part of prosperity. Uh, prosperity is way more than money. When God is with somebody, come on, I see it all the time. We see miracles on a weekly basis, so wonderful things. God will prosper you. You not only need money. What does it help you have a lot of money, but you are sick? Come on, I would appreciate you reacting to the truth. What does it help you have money, but you're on your way to hell? You need money, but you must serve God. Come on, you must be on fire for Jesus. So that you can sow, so that you can be a blessing. You won't be able to take one rand to the grave. Not one. So this is the time to seek the face of God. God wants to prosper his people like Joseph. And prosperity is way more than money. It's very important for you to hear that. Because many people, they fight men of God who are talking about money. Very dumb to do that. It costs a lot of money to have a meeting like this. To have three meetings today. Lots of money. Okay. By the way, the Lord Jesus taught more on money than any other topic. Right. Why? We need money on earth. In heaven, you won't, you won't need money. You're going to slide on the streets of gold. Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. So we need to be uh, blessed now. Uh, tell, you, tell the person next to you, God wants to bless you now, now, now. Huh? Years ago, you know, I, I grew up in the church. I'm a fourth generation Pentecostal pastor and preacher. Years ago, people thought it was very sp spiritual, very holy when, when, when people are poor. It's not holy, it's, it's bad. You can't even buy somebody a milkshake. You can't even, you know, bless somebody with a, with a whatever, hamburger or something. No, God wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing so the bible says god was with joseph 
so that he prospered. Check this out. And he lived in the house of the Egyptian master. And when his master saw that the Lord was with him, one more time, and that the Lord gave him what? Hello, can you, can, can you say that? Success. Say it again. Success. How many of you can, can with boldness proclaim with me, say, God makes me successful. Come on, say it. Some of you don't even think about it because you feel that's not what God has for you. The devil has been lying to you because you've been through difficult times and now you think it's not God's will. But this is the word of God. Amen. And may people see, even in your family, that you are blessed and successful. God can make you successful. Check this out. Wherever you work, you have to have a desire, this is a wonderful word, where you will grow into favor. Where you will really, come on, where God will make you so, so blessed that even your own family, they have to acknowledge that God is with you. Okay, so he made him successful and he had success in what? Everything he did. So Joseph found favor... Are you there? Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. And then Potiphar put him in charge of his household, you see, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. And from the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, check this out, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. Some of you don't even know it, but the Lord blessed that Egyptian boss because of you. <laughs> God bless some of your family who are Philistines because of you. Come on, because of me. When the favor of God is upon us, God will bless everything around you. Even those kids who don't serve the Lord right now, you're still praying for them. But God is blessing them because of favor upon your life. Because of Joseph. Come on. The whole house of Potiphar was blessed. Because of Joseph, the whole Egypt became blessed. Is it possible that God can favor a ministry in an area where people are looking down and people bless even a neighborhood? Come on, the Lord is blessing a neighborhood and neighbors because of the favor that is upon a ministry, a church, your life. It's profound. You've got to make it your own. So, the blessing of the Lord... One more time, check it. Was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So the Bible shows us that God can bless you in the city and on the farm. Don't make excuses. Now you know, Pastor, we are living there in a very poor area. You know. When, when I took this call 20 years ago, there was many excuses. Ooh, this and that. But you see, when God sends you, He will always provide for you. Because where the Lord guides, He provides. You must stop making excuses. Stop saying, yeah, but my parents were divorced when I was a young boy. Stop saying that. Stop saying, you know, I grew up very poor. Stop confessing those things and start confessing the word. Come on. God is no respecter of the person. What he did for Joseph, he can still do for us. Can you say amen? amen? But now Joseph, the name Joseph means the Lord will add. And Joseph was a type of Christ. Because God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, added everything we needed. 
Through Jesus Christ, check this out, we got salvation. Come on. Through Jesus, we got healing. Through Jesus, we got deliverance. That's the gospel. Now, the Bible says that Joseph was a provider. So, his brothers got jealous of him because he got favor with his father. And then his old father, Jacob, made him a wonderful coat of many colors. And then the Bible says that his own brothers became jealous of him. Let me teach you very well this morning. If the favor of God really comes upon you, people all of a sudden become jealous of you. You will, you will experience rejection like never before when the favor of God's really upon you. There's many people that won't be able check this out, to appreciate the prosperity upon your life. So if you are willing this morning uh, with me to say, Lord, make me a Joseph, make me a provider, why will God make you a provider? Exactly what it means to provide for people, to bless people, come on, to be a giver. Why would God bless you with millions if you're a stingy guy? Why would God bless you with a lot of money if you can't even pay the Lord 10%? There's companies this morning, today, many of them, who are paying 90% tithe. And God's blessing them with billions. But many people can't even be trusted with a hundred rand. Now I was reading, and it blessed me so much, just put it on the board, Luke 16.10, the Bible says... Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Ooh, this is good. You should shout, but you're so quiet. And whoever is dishonest, you think nobody knows? You think you steal, but nobody has, you know, knows about it? But God does. I'm going to read it again. Whoever, whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches? This is a word for another day, but let me just throw it in here. If God can't trust you with money, money is for now, it's for earth. It's to build the kingdom of God. It's for the church. It's for souls, by the way. Yeah, and it's for us to eat, and it's for us to, to enjoy life, but, but, but the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and, and His righteousness, and then all these things. What things? Things that you need. House and a car, and, and a husband, and a wife, and kids, and clothes, and food. And then that will be added to you. If you put him first. Uh, by the way, many people don't put God first. You don't need to be a prophet, what I'm telling you now, but let me tell you anyway. Then they will lose it at the end of the day. Why? Because they're not good stewards. If God bless you with money and you don't put him first, be, be warned. You may lose that. It's like when it comes to be a good steward. God says, I entrust you with a business, I entrust you with a salary, I entrust you with money, I entrust you to bring my tithe. If you're not a good steward, it may be taken away from you. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And many people are not even uh, you know, trustworthy with money, so God says, I can't even trust him with the anointing. I can't trust him with people, with wisdom, with my gifts. Hmm? Some of you students here this morning, welcome. If, you, if, you're not, if you're not faithful in the small things, don't ask God for a big ministry. If you can't even clean your room, now I'm preaching. Don't ask him for a big church. Okay, you want me to preach. You get people this morning, they are renting a flat or a house. But they're not, they're not good stewards. 
It's always filthy. Many of them don't own their own houses and there's a reason for that. Because they're not good stewards. So the Lord Jesus says, if you are faithful, if you can be trusted with the little, you will be trusted with much. He says this, yeah. And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, there's my example. That's the words of Jesus. Who will give you property of your own? Selah. So if you if you live somewhere, if you're a student and by the grace of God you live in a room or or if you have your own you, you rent a flat or you rent a house, be a steward. Clean it as if it is your own. So that God can trust you with your own property. If you get a salary this morning and you say, Pastor, it's so small. Don't complain. Say, thank you, Father, for what I have. Because there's many people who who don't even get a salary this morning. Be faithful. Put God first. Put the 10% first. And see how the Lord will increase. Come on, your money and your blessings. So here's Joseph. He was faithful. His brothers became jealous. Okay, they wanted to kill him. Then the oldest brother said, no, no, no. I'm not, we're not going to kill him. Let's just put him in this pit. Throw him into the pit. And then they sold him. Okay. And as a slave. And then Joseph ended up in where? Egypt. But it was God's plan. Why? Because Joseph is a provider. But for 13 years, he went through a time of hell. But eventually, he became the prime minister in a foreign country. No, no, no. Check this out. He's a Jew from Israel. Sold as a slave to Egypt. In context of today, it's like the people of God and Egypt as like, you know, the the enemies of Israel. They don't serve God. But God even promoted Joseph in Egypt. Why? Because he was faithful. He gave him favor in a foreign country and he became the highest of ranks in Egypt. There's no higher rank except of the Pharaoh himself. You couldn't become a king as a Jew in Egypt. There was a Pharaoh. But the highest job you could get, the highest position, Joseph got. In 13 years. Okay? You can go and read for yourself. The Bible says he was with him. He got favor with uh, Potiphar. And then all of a sudden, when you read from verse 6, you can, don't do it now. Go home late and read it. Then the Bible says, the wife of Potiphar, you see, was a very beautiful wife. The devil will always, check this out, attack you or tempt you with something that is beautiful for you. He will not send an ugly thing to you and then think you, got, you will be tempted. He will not tempt you like, you know, when, you, when it's dark in your room and it's quiet and you feel tired and all of a sudden, Wah! He doesn't do it like that. He works through people. So all of a sudden, Potiphar's wife was beautiful. They were alone. I mean, it's like in the Holiday Inn. <laughs> Nobody was there. And she said every day, oh, what a dangerous woman. I always tell my pastors, run, run, like Joseph. Every day, she comes up to Joseph and says, hey, come, sleep with me. There's nobody here. You know, it's smart, it's in the palace. Get the picture. Easy, Mm, easy woman. And Joseph said, What? How can I sin against my God who gave me favor, who blessed me? And he says, how can I sin against my Lord, my boss, who gave me this opportunity? Check this out. And he made me steward 
a steward over everything he owns. And then he ran. And then she made up a story. She falsely accused him. And then Joseph ended in prison. And the Bible says even in prison, the Lord was thinking of Joseph. And the Lord, come on, favored Joseph. Even in prison. Come on, let me prophesy to you. You say you are going through a tough time. Come on, the, the, the anointing of the Lord is upon me. Woo! Hallelujah. Do we enjoy the word here? And even in the prison, the Lord blessed Joseph so much that he got favor. Even in prison, he, got, he became the leader. <laughs> and then later on, the Pharaoh made him the prime minister of Egypt. Then, he was even above Potiphar. Come on. In a foreign land. So the favor of God will lift you above everybody else. But here's the thing now. I'm going to leave you now with something very powerful. Just like Joseph went through tests. Just like Joseph had to write many tests. You and I will also write tests. You will never be promoted if you can't uh, pass your test. And maybe it's not Potiphar's wife. Maybe it is. Maybe you sit here and you're doing some stuff and you think nobody knows. Let me help you. God knows. And he's so gracious to us. So here's the thing. He gives you time to repent. He gives you time to repent privately. And if you don't repent privately, especially for leaders and people in position, it will come to light and eventually you will have to repent publicly. You will go through tests. And Joseph passed his test. That was a big temptation for a young man. There's many people these days that are sleeping around. Let me say it as it is. Thank God for the word ministry in this house. And they think that God will bless it. He will never bless it. God will never bless sin. Sex is wonderful for the marriage. Why? It's, but it's for people who are in covenant. God made sex, by the way, not the devil. So the devil even made sex like an ugly thing these days. It's not. It's for a husband and a wife. Okay? So there's not many young people. I'm so proud of my kids. They are here. I'm talking to them about these things. Here's my beautiful wife. We made that decision. We wait until we get married. Why do I say it? There's many young people here. It's profound what I'm telling you. God will always bless His Word. God will always bless purity. Amen. Now we are living in a time where everything goes. doesn't matter what you go. When the pastor speaks about things, uh, those people will say, He judge. You can't say anything today. They, he, they judge. No, no, no. We don't judge. There is a judge that will judge you. Every one of us will be standing before that judge. Joseph, he had to write many tests. This is so profound. And he passed this test. When, when they were alone, you see. So many times the devil will tempt you. There, when you, where you are alone at work or in a hotel room or in a guest house, and you think nobody knows. It will tempt you especially when you are tired. So, to the, to the pastors here this morning and all these uh, theological students, listen to me. When you are tired, don't quit, just learn to rest. Be accountable. So Joseph, he passed his test. 
Okay? And there's a lot of tests that, that, that all of us will, will write. Write this down. Uh, it comes, when it comes to our faithfulness, when it comes to integrity, when it comes to loyalty, when it comes to obedience, uh, just work the board for me, please. When it comes to faith, you can make your own list. You will be tested. I'm preaching 30 years now. Let me tell you, I've been writing many tests. I don't care who you are or how old you are. You will write tests. All of us do. And so when we pass, we get promoted to the next grade. It's like from grade zero or grade R, whatever they call it now. Then you get to grade one. Until you get to grade 12. In, 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 in your spiritual life, it works exactly the same. You just don't know it. God will entrust you with money, and now He will see if you are faithful, if you are obedient. It's all about stewardship. Just like Joseph. He was faithful. Even in prison, he was faithful. There's many people today, they will say, Where is God? Why did He allow this? You know. I deal with them all the time. Joseph was faithful. He could have said, Lord, I've been obedient and I've served you well and I've served my father so well. And look at my brothers, they wanted to kill me and whatever. No, no, no. It was all part of God's plan to provide for the people of God in Israel. So maybe God wants to raise you up as a Joseph. Come on. Maybe God wants to use you as the pillar in your family. Can you say amen? Maybe God wants to bless you as a provider. Amen. Can he trust you? Can God trust you with money? Or do you have long fingers? Hmm? Come on, just listen. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me. Because I see and I hear in the Spirit. So I will say stuff that I need to say. If that's the case, let's say you steal, you will never get to that great place of favor. Never. Because you allow the devil now to steal, not only from you, but from other people. And God would say, you're not faithful. I cannot trust you with money. If that's you, here's my word of wisdom for you. Repent. Now, and turn around and say, Lord, I also want to have favor. I also want to be faithful. And so I can keep on for the whole day. If you are in a, an affair, mm, it's glorious now, yeah. You say, nobody knows. I think he does, yeah. Maybe you are busy with an affair and you think nobody knows. God says you will never get favor because I cannot favor anything outside of my word. I cannot bless anything outside of my word. As simple as that. What, what do you need to do? Repent. Repent means turn around. Change in your mind. Hmm? If you are a person who always talking negatively about other people. You will never see like Joseph favor at the highest place. You will then also become jealous of people who are highly favored. God says, repent. And I think we almost pray and say, Lord, just, just save our mouth. Okay, that was good. Henry, that was a phenomenal point. By, by the, that was. Lord, save my mouth. Most people's trouble is because of their mouths. So Joseph became prime minister. And then he provided for his old father, his brothers. That threw him right into the pit. <laughs> And he provided for the whole Israel and for the whole Egypt. The Bible says the whole world came to Joseph for food. Think about that. 
Are you ready for favor? Really? And when all of hell will break loose against you and people become jealous of you, will you still then say yes? yes. That test is coming very soon, especially on an anointing like this. Because it's profound word. Those tests are coming for everybody. You will be tempted, and when you say no to that temptation, by the grace of God, come on, we all need the Lord. By the help of the Holy Spirit, check this out. Then you will pr be promoted. There's many of you are waiting for a husband. Are you faithful now? Do you keep yourself pure now, young man, young girl? No, I want a husband, but you sleep around. The husband is not coming. And you wonder why. The woman is not coming and you wonder why. God sees one of his name. I mean... Is the God that sees. Hmm? He wants to favor all of us. He's not a respecter of person. He's still the God of Joseph. He wants to lift you at your business. Come on. He wants to lift you in your family. He wants to lift you in your ministry. <laughs> Say this with me. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Please, help me Please help me. With all my tests. He's the best teacher there is. Amen. Sometimes, how many of you have been uh, at school previously? And it was so boring. I mean, that teacher, uh, she, uh, she wanted to say something. I don't know what, but she wanted to say something. And then when you get out of class, you thought to yourself, what did she say? Uh -huh. hmm? Come on, we have many here. Hey, Nitschka. And you thought to yourself, what? This is so boring. Especially those math class at the end of the day. Now all of a sudden they start with those classes in the morning because they've seen the kids needs to be fresh still, you know. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Come on, He's God. He lives within me and you. And He will teach you concerning writing tests. He will tell you softly. No, that is not good for you. Don't do it. Listen, you will hear his voice. Where a demon will always come and force himself on you. Come on, you've got to do it now and do it now, 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 now. And then you become impulsive. That's why you make mistakes. The Holy Spirit is not like that. He's gentle. So when they advertise smoking, how do they do that? These white beaches. I've been to many islands. I mean, it's beautiful. Seychelles, we've been there. Mauritius, beautiful. Zanzibar. Then we had those lovely cocktails. Just without alcohol. My wife loves it, you know, the juice stuff. So when they advertise smoking white beaches, and all of a sudden there's this beautiful girl with a bikini. How do you connect the two? I mean smoking and a beautiful girl on a white beach with a bikini. You know. And then I told the people in, in the Afrikaans meeting, you know, the devil will tempt you always with something that looks nice for the flesh. But he will not tell you that at the end of the day, people are dying of, come on, lung cancer. Even alcohol now these days, even gambling is on the TV like never before. It's easy. Just try to gamble. You need money. And then he doesn't tell you that you're going to lose all your money. And, and later then these people, they steal from others to gamble. And it's a very, very bad situation. Like alcohol. I mean, they advertise it with these, you know, guys with the six pack. I only have, have one pack, but they have six. <laughs> six packs. And you associate this beer and this, I don't know even what you call Brannevein, but whatever. Brandy or what. Thank God he protected me from that. And you, you, you associate this 
guy with the six pack with the beer and you think that's nice but it doesn't show you the car accident it doesn't show you the divorce it doesn't show you the abuse of girls and boys watch out your test is coming when you can pass the test like Joseph I must end now you will also be promoted. If God can trust you with the little, He will give you much. If God can trust you with somebody else's, John Ray's property, that's also in context when you work for somebody, when you have a father in your life. And God says, I can trust you in the office when he's not here. You work for a boss. You get many people when the boss enters the, the office, all of a sudden they, they're very busy. God knows exactly what you're doing. If, if you are faithful, obedient, eh, with those tests, He will promote you. And, and the whole purpose of becoming a Joseph is really to be a blessing to many people. Let's clap for Jesus. Come on, let's give Him praise. Woo, hallelujah. Did you enjoy this powerful word? I can just see that God wants to favor you. Come on, He wants to lift you. Come on, uh, among your family, He wants to lift you up. Don't make excuses and say, we, we've been poor. Your, your, your testimony is, is, is going to become so much greater because of what you've been through. Amen? So we are trusting God for supernatural favor. We are trusting God for favor for all our people. Tonight, we're going to pray for people who need work and jobs. Tonight, we have a Holy Spirit ministry. Welcome to Word and Spirit. It's unique. God gave me the name. That's a mandate on Henry Wilson's life. In the morning, there's powerful teaching, yeah? Wonderful work. In the evenings, Holy Spirit ministry. Many people say there's not churches anymore where the, where the Holy Spirit is working. Well, very few. So come, you're welcome. And we're going to trust God for miracles. We see miracles all the time. And I really believe that God can, can add to your life whatever you need. Joseph means God will add. Amen. Say this with me. God will add. Say this with me. God will add to me. Come on, tell, turn to your neighbor. Say, God will add to you. Come on, turn to somebody else who's more enthusiastic. God will add to you whatever you need. Come on, how many of you are taking this wonderful word? God will add to you. Money, job, business, husband, wife. Come tonight, I'll pray for you. Come. The anointing of God is on me for miracles. Come. If you take this word, your life will change. If you can pass the tests and God sees that you are faithful, you keep yourself pure, you wait for your husband, you wait for your wife, you wait for your kids. What do I mean by that? There's a time for everything. You serve God passionately. You, you, you stay faithful. You come to the house of the Lord. God says, this guy or this girl... I can trust. And He will give you a miracle. He will promote you. But He will only bless you so that you can be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's clap for Jesus. Give Him praise. All the praise and all the glory belongs to you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the wonderful word. I've given my very best, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've added to our lives. Because of what you've done on the cross. Thank you for your body. Thank you for your precious blood. Thank you that we can testify this morning. We, we, we received so many wonderful things because of you. And Lord, I pray this morning that you will add. 
salvation and healing and deliverance and provision and favor to all our precious people. May they experience your favor wherever they go. And just like with Joseph, Lord, I, I believe that you can bless us as well with favor in a wonderful way. We give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? May, may your own family, may your own friends and neighbors see that God is with you.